Welcome back to the Hustle Wing podcast. Hustle Wing is the top marketplace for side gigs. Today's episode, I'm super elated to introduce Jared Kessler, who is the founder and CEO of Easy Knock, uh, and in full transparency, my uh, previous boss. And um, I'm really excited because I get to share a couple things with you I've never got to say before in terms of my gratitude for your experience in my journey and how much I was able to learn from you. But before we go down that path, um, can you tell us a little bit about what Easy Knock is as a product? Sure. So when uh, we started Easy Knock in 2017, it started as a company that does sale leasebacks for residential homeowners, which essentially just in plain English means be a renter of your own home. Uh, we targeted people that didn't have access to the mortgage market. So you built up this equity in your home. You're supposed to be able to tap it uh, as opposed to putting debt, uh, taking debt out. And what's happened over the last five years or so is it morphed into more of a platform where we started adding other products in that find the white spaces in real estate uh, where there's millions of people in the market that own homes today. And there's and maybe some people that are looking to buy homes and there's problems that are not being met with solutions in the market. So we're trying to find those solutions, either creating products or distributing products that are out there. And that's our goal. We want to be sort of like the SoFi for residential home solutions. Super cool. So I know from my time at Easy Knock, we started with just sell and stay. And I kind of know the elevator pitch a little bit for that. But can you give us the elevator pitch maybe of some of the newer products and just recover sell and stay for people that um, maybe don't know what a sale leaseback is? Yeah. So sell and stay, I'll start with that. That's easy. It's a it's a sale lease back where you give people a piece of paper that allows them to buy it back or get the full appreciation of their home. So if we give someone a certain amount of cash and then three years from now they sell that home, they get the, the, the sale price minus whatever sort of day one cash we give them plus like an exit fee. Um, since then, we created some other flavors of sale leasebacks. We have a one year sale leaseback that is sort of acts as a non-lending bridge product that's called movability. So you don't have to worry about the timing issue if you're moving because you can rent your own home. Now you have money for your future home. And a lot of people are running to this issue because mortgage companies require a certain debt to income ratio. If you have two mortgages, you can't satisfy that debt because there's two large amounts of debt. So by buying the home, and taking out the mortgage, you take out the debt. We, four weeks ago, announced an acquisition of a company called Ribbon, which is a cash offer. So in a low inventory environment like we're in now, if someone wants to win the offer to buy a home and there's eight people, which probably will happen in this environment, a cash offer will win. So we, we provide that cash offer for people that don't have the cash. And I would say the last thing is we're building and we're, we announced this month, Easy Knock Direct, which is a marketplace that connects homeowners directly with investors. So if someone wants to sell their home, they don't have to go through an iBuyer. They can circumvent that, get less fees and go directly to an investor. And we would simulate that negotiation. God, that is crazy. So that's pretty neat. I, I just ended up selling a couple houses in Virginia and they were all cash buyers. And I'm like, where the hell are these people coming from? They're just coming out of the woodwork. And they were like trusts and things that were buying as kind of Airbnbs, I think. and. The second one you just talked about, I heard of a company called Realty Mogul, who I think does that marketplace thing, but in the commercial space. And so if I understand you guys are doing it for the individual residential home, but investor, kind of that same model, but in that the residential space. That is correct. Yep. They're that trying is, to like a marketplace. That is so cool. And I'm sure it's very complex to set all that up. So I'm really excited about um, that product. When, what's the, is that already out? Is there... Yeah, we 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 piloted it with uh one of the bigger investors in the country and we're going to start inviting people next month into it uh beyond them. That is so cool. Well, congrats. I I'm sure that wasn't an easy undertaking. I'm really excited to stay tuned to that. The last I, piece before I kind of jump into your story and a little bit of the story of Easy Knock, um some of the background on it is is kind of getting an understanding of what help that you guys need. I know Easy Knock is you guys consistently have kind of I you called it a recession proof company. And in a lot of ways, when we saw that happen with 2020 and some of the things that have gone on, you guys are still here and it seems like going very strong. So I've seen you guys consistently hire. Can you only understand if there's going to be, if there are currently, or if there's going to be any good roles for contract or side hustles that might make sense for people listening to consider applying for or being aware of? 
Yeah. So like, like everyone else, everyone's in a period of austerity right now where they're trying to save money. So part of that is when we have contracting opportunities, marketing, product, property management, operations, um, sales, those are all areas where we're constantly looking for people that can provide more efficiencies at a lower cost. So if there's someone out there that has an opportunity where they think they can add value after they hear the podcast today, we'd be, always be uh, willing to talk to them. Uh, every month, it's going to be a different need. It could be someone that has to a business development salesperson that's looking for home builders, or it could be an engineer trying to build our marketplace that I just described. So it's going to be very case specific, but we are counter cyclical to your point, Perry. So there's, you know, we're going to, we, we think we're going to see a huge amount of demand over the next two years and we're going to need people to help meet those demands. Yeah, that's awesome. A lot of founders that I've interviewed have been like the number one thing is always sales. And they're just like you, they kind of rotate. They'll have a season of product, a season of technology or a season of whatever, but sales seems to be the one that's always like, yeah. there's a model to make that work if it's just commission only or something. So that's, yeah, we're, that's, we're, we're looking across the board always. So if there's people that have certain skill set that they think can add value and they hear what they like today, then we'd be happy to talk to anyone. Cool. Perfect. Um, so with that, I kind of want to jump into the story, your story, a little bit of the background of Easy Knock, but you and I have a special history and I um, I want to jump into that because I, I don't know if you know, but for me, you were, I know I was, <laughs> I, in my head, I joke around, I was going to be like, yeah, I know I'm your favorite employee, blah, blah, blah. And we would chuckle and kind of move on. Um, I was a little bit of a, a bad employee in some ways. I, um, I think you and I have similarities in that. I don't necessarily, I, I've never wanted to work for somebody else. I've always kind of wanted to work for myself. And that was a challenge for me. And I, during my season of time at Easy Knock, I've learned that about myself. And you were one of the most inspirational people in my life in terms of where I was in 2018 and where I wanted to go. You took um, a chance, number one, you took a chance on me as a person. And I am just so grateful for like, the, the opportunity to get to work with you. And not only that, but you have this, and I don't know if you see it, you have this innate ability, this talent to find people, find like-minded people, find really talented people that um, they're kind of underdoggy. You know, when I think of the core team of people that we had, uh, you know, a decent amount of them are, are still there, number one. Number two, a lot of them were just gritty and different. And, you know, I, you found value in these people and not only that, but you were able to pull additional value out of them. And one of the, my favorite sayings that you had as a leader that I, I use today when I talk to people or when I, you know, I've led product at other companies that I've been at since is, um, you know, a lot of times I think we would, you, you get used to going to someone with questions. And I had a, a mentor early on in New York city in my first job. And she, she said, figure it out on your own. Tell me how you think you would do it before you ask me the question, like come bring your solution to me. And then, you know, then ask me the question, but don't just come to me, not think about it. And I unfortunately made my own mistake. And I think I did it a couple of times at easy knock. And you had this loving way of being like, I, we hired you as the, the, the head of product or the head of marketing, the head of technology. You tell us, you tell me how to do it. You tell me how you think we should do it. And that it gave the opportunity to build confidence, not just for me, but I saw other people on the team build their confidence and just become, you know, better, stronger, more confident people. And um, yeah, I mean, you, there's some really incredible things about you as a leader that I'm just really grateful for. And I've never had the opportunity to thank you for those. So I wanted to say thank you before we kind of move on to talking about how you got to Easy Knock and some of that story. So very grateful. And uh, thank you for the jobs that you've created back then and the jobs you're creating today and the opportunities and the families that you're supporting through what you do. It's really incredible. Um, even the customers, like tapping into equity, you know, when I was there, this customer had open heart surgery, their child needed open heart surgery. They were able to tap their equity to get their kid access to a new heart. And it's like the, how meaningful, you know, of a thing to do from nine to five, 40, 50 hours a week, like. I could go home and be like, I'm really proud of what I do. And I just want to remind you of that. If you ever forget how incredible it is, what Easy Knock is doing. So thank you. Thank you, Perry. Um, it's always, look, at the end of the day, everyone's doing this and they're making a good amount of money, but uh, having an impact on people's lives is far more satisfying. So 
It's awesome to hear that. I do remember the first time I met you, you were in the lobby of our office on uh, by the Flatiron District. And I remember meeting with you and everyone at the company always really enjoyed working with you. We were sad to see you go. But yeah, look, I, I do believe at the end of the day, you hire people to tell you what to do, not you tell them what to do is what I used to say to you. And I do believe that you got to give people enough rope to hang themselves. And a lot of people are control freaks and they don't believe that the people can do their jobs. And what I've learned over the years is you're going to learn two things. Either they can't do the job or they can do the job. Mm -hmm. If they can't do the job, you're going to save them a lot of heartache and pain. Maybe you can give them some pointers to do it, but chances are it's not the right role for them. And then there's people that just don't get the chance to thrive and you got to give them that opportunity. So thank you. Yeah. I know from my time working there, you kind of talked about how your dad was a really important leader, I think in your life who helped kind of guide you. Um, and I think that the same is true for me that my dad was <laughs> probably more irritable and a little fiery and maybe um, I picked up some of the wrong traits, but can you talk about how you've kind of grown as a leader and how to, how easy knock started? Cause I know you were in the financial institutions for a very long time, some of the best of the best, um, you know, finance companies. Can you talk about how easy knock started and maybe share some tidbits of, inf you know, like you just shared a really insightful thing for people to understand any of those along the way. But I know easy knock had a pretty interesting emotional beginning, right? Like there was a friend that need was going through a thing. Can you talk about that? Sure. So yeah, my dad did have an inspiration. I, I think I remember your family was like in the Christmas tree business, right? Is that, is that, is that, does that, do I recall that correctly? My mom, uh, yes. Yeah, there you go. Like, like Taylor, like Taylor Swift. <laughs> um, so, um, look at, at the, the beginning of easy knock is like a lot of other people's journeys. You're, you're working for other people. You're coming up with ideas and you say to yourself, do I have the courage to do this myself? And you hear these awesome stories about, you know, you had a friend that was struggling. Like when we started easy knock, there was, there was a story about, um, uh, someone that needed help, couldn't get a mortgage. And they said, I wish they were a renter that, that I can rent my own home. And like someone mentioned to me and I'm like, why would someone want to do that? And then we started digging in more and more. Then we saw that the problem wasn't this, this big or the people listening was small. And then it became gigantic. And then like to your, your point, Perry, we started seeing real life struggles. Like if you want to really see America, you should come sit at easy knock for a day. Cause you could see the entire country what people are facing today. And it's really a frustrating dynamic because you have these people that live the American dream. They built up equity in their home. And now you're hearing about things are costing more and it's gonna be harder and millions of people are gonna start losing safety nets. So what's happening in the political landscape? Well, there's a solution. A solution for most of these people is the average American has $150,000 of equity. Equity is something you should be taking out, not debt when you're in a rising interest rate environment because it's newfound money, you built it. And the shame of it is people are constrained from doing it because either the government thinks they know better than the people what they should do. And I'm not trying to make this about the government, but it's <laughs> the policy I should say. And I, and in fairness to them, I don't think they realize how big the problem is. So we saw the problem early on, we tried to help people and it sucked. When we started the business, the first like, First thing you got to be prepared for is everyone's going to not call you back. They're going to tell you your idea is stupid. They're going to tell you to do something else and they're going to convince you not to do it. So it's very demoralizing, but if it really is a good opportunity to separate the people that have the tenacity and grit to do it versus the people that don't. Yeah. I like it was mind blowing the array of use cases. I think a lot of times we're like so focused on, you know, what's that persona look like? And for easy knock and for a lot of companies, it's not just one persona. I know you guys probably still today, it's probably still true that you have like people that want the money to start a small business or people that are having a crisis or people that are, they want to invest in more housing or whatever. And any of those stories that you can talk about that are really inspiring, like client wise that you guys have run into? There's, there's, uh, there's people that have been struggling for a while. There's um, during the pandemic in 2020, I got um, an email from a gentleman in Texas who uh, his son died in a motorcycle accident. 
and he was very, very distracted and he couldn't focus on anything because he just lost his child, which would be my reaction as well too. And I remember um, someone on our property management team emailed me and said, um, this happened and I felt horrible about it. And I said, keep me up, let me know if the gentleman has any issues, we'll do what we can to help. And you know, about six months later, he had a daughter that died of COVID. She was like 12 years old. And, um, and we were able to, to basically help, help him because we gave him equity. So when, so, cause he was, he just was dealing with that issue, which no parent should ever have to go through losing two children. And we gave him a chance to take the money out of his home, take control of his life, even though it was falling apart around him and have the stability to take care of the rest of his family. Though some version of that story is not ex as extreme every day, but people are struggling and by helping people with medical costs, like you said, where we've, we've had veterans, we've had people that have had heart attacks or need heart transplants. We have people that have student debt and what's going on there, they were depending on it. Now they have equity that they can go to as a backup plan or people that when, when you can't get the money out of your home, you're just going to pick a bad menu of bad choices, which could be credit card debt, which I'm sure you know, and I know that it's gotten more expensive. People just need a chance. They need a time out. And so we see those stories all the time. If we help someone, they buy back their house, they call us six months later and say, thank you if it wasn't for you. Honestly, to the extreme of some people commit suicide, whatnot, money can have a big effect on people's lives. So in some instances, not to, to exaggerate, sometimes we are saving people's lives. Yeah, it's, I, I see it. I've seen it definitely, you know, there's a lot, there's a, we're talking to a marketplace of hustlers, right? And a lot of people, some people want to have a side gig because they want to stay busy, but some people, they kind of fall into this because they might've lost their main thing. And I know with things moving to this AI world of bots qualifying people and it's just less human connection. I, I see the same thing. And I know finances are like the number one role to play with that. To that piece, one of the last things I would love to touch on is I know that you're an incredible dad. I got to see it firsthand. Um, I know that you're an incredible partner, your wife, when we got to meet her, I think during one of our Thanksgiving events, I mean, she's just so proud of you. And I know working with you, she was a huge motivation for you kind of, helping you become the best version of yourself. Can you talk about how you do these 80, 100 hour weeks or, you know, you're, you're just taking this thing in 2017, you know, bringing it up while you actually have, you have a startup toddler and then you have actual toddlers and you have a family and how do you balance all that out? What have you learned? Um, well, I start with what motivates me, Perry. And what motivates me is my family being proud of me, right? I'm not driven by money. I'm not driven by vanity. I'm not driven by spite, which a lot of people are. I'm driven by my family. And I want my kids to say, my dad did something cool and he helped people. And I wasn't doing that when I was on Wall Street. I was just playing with numbers all day. And yes, I provided for my family. So I tell my family that, you know, during the week, it's going to be rough. I work a lot, but the weekends are for you. And I I, I don't, people say it to me all the time, like, you don't work the weekends. I say, no, I don't. I first of all need the break mentally, but more importantly, I need to give my family time. So at night I make time for them. And a big part of it is delegation. You gotta, you gotta find good people that you can delegate to on your team and you don't try to do everything. And I think that's the mistake a lot of people make. Um, and you got, there is an opportunity to work, to make people work really hard, but also give them the opportunity for work-life balance. So when they have a family emergency, you're totally understanding about it. Easy Knock doesn't have a vacation policy. You could take off as much as you want now, which has changed since you've been there. And so it's, and I try to lead by example saying your, your family comes first, you know, at the end of the day, no one ever said they, they worked, they wish they worked harder when they're about to die. So you got to put that perspective and I try to keep that perspective. I don't know if people understand how impactful what you're saying is. We're, we're talking to a founder and CEO who runs a company in Manhattan. Like, and I don't know that there's a lot of folks that, that back up the words the same way that you do. And so I just, it's really incredible that that's the model. And that's probably why you've kept people for such a long time when a lot of people like myself, I've made my own dumb mistakes, but turnover after a year or two years, and you've had people for half a decade at this point since the company began. So I think that's a testament to uh, the way that you run things. That's 
pretty much all of the questions that I had for today's session. I mean, I'm just, again, thank you for making the time. It's so good to catch up with you. I, I hope that we can, anyone that's in, in need of these mortgage-based products, check out easyknock.com and see if there's a good fit for you. And then again, check, check the jobs page there too. Uh, Hustle Wing will try to help see if there's any um, good roles, contract roles there moving forward. But easyknock.com, there's a Great. There's a lot of great products for people and there's a lot of career opportunity there. So thank you, Jared. Well, Perry, thank you for making the time. It's a, it's an honor to be part of your podcast and it's great to see you and um, always, always great to see you.